In this lesson, you will learn how to interpret a scatter plot. Now, a scatter plot is used to show the relationship between different sets of data. So, to help you understand this concept, let's take a look at an example. The school's basketball team decided to have additional practices in order to improve their skills and increase the number of points they score each game. So, what you have here is a scatter plot that shows the relationship between the hours of additional practice and the number of points scored in a game. So the x-axis shows you the number of additional practice hours, whereas the y-axis has the number of points scored in each game. As you can see, as the hours of practice increase, the number of points increase, because you see the, the dots or the, the data points on this scatter plot moving upwards. Now this scatter plot shows a linear relationship. So let's just say the coach wants to know what is the relationship between the hours of additional practice and the number of points scored in a game. What the coach would want to do is construct a line of best fit. Now the line of best fit represents the majority of the data. It tries to mm, summarize the relationship of the data. It's not going to include every single data point. But to make a line of best fit, you draw a line where the same number of points fall above the line as they do fall below the line. Now let's just take a look at where that line might fall given this data. So here in green I've drawn a line in that shows you that roughly the same number of points fall above the line so you can see there are five points that fall above the line there are five points that fall below the line and there are two points that fall pretty much directly on the line. Now to further understand the relationship between the number of practice hours and the number of points scored, you would need to know the equation of this line. So you could predict, potentially, let's just say, what if we had 12 additional hours of practice, which isn't shown by this graph? Now you could make an idea of how many points that would correspond to in a game situation by understanding the trend line here, understanding this line of best fit. So what we need to do is find the equation of this line in slope-intercept form. So to do that, you need two points. And as we saw after drawing the rough idea of what the best fit line would look like, I see that two points fall directly on the line. Now that's the point 456, okay? And the next one is 561. So what you wanna do is begin by finding the slope. And the slope is equal to the change in Y over the change in X. So we can fill in some values. We have 61 minus 56 for the y values. And we're going to put that over 5 minus 4. 61 minus 56 is 5. And 5 minus 4 is 1. This means the slope of this line is 5. Now that we know the slope, we can find the y-intercept. Now it looks like the y-intercept right here is slightly above 35. Now let's see what that exact value ends up being. To do that, since we already know the slope, we can use one of our points, and I'm going to use 456, and our slope value of 5, and plug this into the y equals mx plus b form. So let's just scroll down and make a little space. So we know y equals 56 for this point, m is 5, x is 4, and we're trying to solve for b. So begin by multiplying 5 times 4, which is 20. Now what you do is subtract 20 from both sides. So 56 minus 20 equals 36, which means b equals 36. So now the equation for this line is y equals 5x plus 36. And this line summarizes the relationship between the number of hours that are spent in practice and the number of points that are scored in a game. Now you can put this line into context. So the slope tells you, right, the slope is the rate of change. So this tells you for every hour of practice, they score about five additional points. Now remember, that's because practice is on the x-axis and games, I mean, sorry, points is on the y-axis. So let's just look at those two points we talked about, right? So here's 456 and here's 561. 561 right here, 456 right here. Now, the span here, the run, is 1, right? Because it goes from hour 4 to hour 5. And it goes up from 55 to 61, which is about 5. So you can see that, let's just say if we went over one more, right? If we went to 6 hours, right, here would be the run. And we'd go up about 5, which from 61 would go up to like 66, somewhere around here. And that's roughly where the line falls. 
And you can do this again. If you go over and up, you see this is about the pattern. For every hour they practice additionally, they score about five more points. And it's not exact, right? Because some of these data points don't exactly fall on the line. The line just summarizes these effects. Now lastly, we could talk about the y-intercept. Since the y-intercept is where x equals zero, this means with no additional hours spent practicing. So x equals zero is the normal number of hours that they spend practicing, and each point on the x-axis represents additional hours. So x equals zero means the normal practice regimen. The team is scoring about 36 points. And as you can see, when they practice more, they start to have better success in their games. Now this is how you interpret a scatter plot. I hope this makes certain problems a little easier for you. Thanks for watching.